Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about neomorphic design and as you can see on the right side I created a little app for that where you can see a YouTube player and that shows some statistics and some buttons and the difference about I want to talk about where comes the neomorphic design from, how does it look like in general and how can we implement it in Flutter in an easy way. So let's get started. Neumorphic design sounds very fancy and we have to say we thanks to Alexander Plutio um, he created a very interesting design this year and with that there was a big hype around um, Neumorphic design. The thing is I just searched for it this one. I think that was his design with that he got pretty famous because it is something different. Material cards for example always rely that they are on top of something and with the box shadow it looks like the cards would lie or would be a layer on top of the things and you can also see on the buttons or everything that they are pressable. Neumorphic design is in that case a bit different because it looks more that it's coming out of the shape and create something out of it. So you can see for example here you have that nice little box shadows that look like the material itself getting pushed out of it. All of these stuff and the buttons and everything. And they have some um, benefits because it looks very realistic and you can also recreate the realistic view. But it also has some disadvantages because you have to be very careful with the colors and everything because the accessibility could uh, be less good. But in general, it gets a big hype at the moment and everyone tries to create that stuff. There are also some very good pub dev packages. And that's why I make this video today because I found a package called Clay and they promise us with the clay containers, um, they promise us that you can create such a neomorphic design in a very easy way. And I also can recommend you an article in Medium, I don't know who's written it, but it's down in the description. So if you uh, want, take a look. It is really interesting how the neomorphic design has created, what it changes in the design and why it changes so much in the design. The thing is, in the last couple of years, design didn't really had a breakthrough. The changes of visualization were not that big. With the neomorphic design, it was like a renaissance because neomorphic design is nothing new but it is something old that coming new again. So it is, yeah, like trends, right? So if you want to take a look, clay containers, and now let's get started into code, right? All right, so how can we use the Neumorphic design with the clay package? First of all, as always, we have to go to pub.dev. You have a link in the description below, so please take it, uh, take a look. And if you scroll down, you find the examples, how they look, how they to create a shape. You see there is also a clay text where you can have like an emboss and also some sizes, all that kind of stuff, which is pretty neat. The documentation is very good. And as always, we have to depend on that stuff. So we take the dependencies going to the Android Studio in the pubspec.yaml and guess what we will add that as a dependencies to our pubspec.yaml. Now I say packages get to get the newest package and you see neomorphic design everything is there. If we jump back now to our home screen which is basically a scaffold with a container that is centered we can now have a child in that centered widget and for that I want to use a clay container. You can see you can just use it as a basic container so for example I can give it a child and that child is maybe a text where I say hello world. Nothing so special right now, I think, but if I add also a text style and I make it a bit bigger, so size 102, 102 maybe a bit smaller. And as you maybe can see already, the shape is completely different. So we get it, it surrounds from inside. So let me give that um, text here a padding. So then it's better to see. But if you take a look inside here, you will see there is a nice little border around it and it looks like it's coming out of the um, shape below. And you can give that a different color. So that clay container here takes a color parameter, which is the color that is the background of. So with that, you define how the shape will look from out below. So color, uh, let's take colors.red for now, just to make sure you understand what I mean. So because of that box shadow that we create up here and down here, it looks very weird if the 
color on top, so the clay color is not the same color that it is below. So that means that if we want to have a different color on the top, so for example black, then we have also to make the scaffold the same background color so that we see nothing anymore of course but so to use the black color was maybe not the best example so let's change that back to green and for the base color of the clay container we make it also green and now you can see we have that nice little box shadow and the cool thing about these clay containers is that they behave exactly the same like normal containers that means for us we have a height a width a color and also some properties that we already know from the uh, container <clears throat> but we have also some additional things like for example parent color, surface color, spread and emboss, depth and so on. So for example the parent color would be in that case colors.green. So additionally we have also the border radius where we can set different uh, radiuses for it. So example I can say 50 and we get like a rounded border surrounding the whole thing, which is very nice. Then we have the opportunity of depth uh, and we can make that very depth. And you can see it feels much heavier. The whole button looks a bit more heavier and it drops harder on the ground behind. So for a 100, you can see it is getting very strong surrounding it. So you can play with that to make it very nice or you can just leave it out and keep the standard. And then we have the cur curve type. With that we can uh, set the curve of the shadows. Um, we can set a custom border radius if we want to change the colors of the borders. We have emboss and emboss says if it is um, on the foreground, so pushed to us, or if it's pushed behind, so it is uh, clicked or selected, which is pretty neat to use. We have the surface color where we can change the surface color only. You can play with these things. But what I really, really, really like about the whole um, clay container is you can nest them inside each other. So for example, we have here that icon and I can say now inside of that icon, we have another clay container, which has a specific height and it takes of course the parent color or at least the color in general from colors.green. So, and now you can see we get these double layered and it looks very nice already but what we can also do is we can give the whole thing a border radius and now it looks like the old-fashioned 80s uh, buttons that you can click so you have like one rounded border inside of another border which looks pretty nice so we can use all of that stuff and that is nearly everything to the clay containers and also to the neumorphic design to work in flutter now we can create our user interface out of that. All right, guys, uh, thank you for joining me today at the adventure, how to set up the Neumorphic design with the clay containers. We will talk more in more deep in the next episode about how we can use the different things to create the um, view that I showed you at the beginning of the series. And on the right side, you find the subscribe button and on top of me, you have two videos that you are maybe interested in. And if you really like that interest at uh, the topic of Neumorphic design, please leave a like button here so that I know it. Thank you very much for joining me today and enjoy the rest of your day. See you tomorrow, guys.